Alright, this is going to be my tutorial for Lab 12. Uh, one quick thing I wanted to do before we get started is if you were having the same issue I was where there was this weird reflection on the outside, the way that you fix that is by going up here to View um, and then go to Display and then turn off Real View Graphics. This gives it this like weird hollow like reflection effect which is on by default if you have a graphics card that supports it. Um, but I don't really like it, so I decided to turn it off um, and just go display and then just click it and now it's off. Um, so first thing that we're going to do to get started with Lab 12 is create a new file. And it's going to be a part. I'm just going to drag this part. OK. All right. And as always, sketch. Can you sketch? I'm going to go on the top line again because this is going to be a cover plate. And I assume it's going to be going face down. So we can just go like this. Um, and then let's just go ahead and get started. Create a circle centered on the origin. Uh, we're going to need a couple circles. Let's see here. The first one I want to make is uh, 10 inches. Okay. I'm going to go escape. Exit there. So now I have my circle. I'm going to go here and extrude that circle. And this extrusion is going to be 0.5. Press enter. Enter again to uh, accept it. So there we go. Now I have our little disk. Now we're going to, going to do a new sketch on this face, and we're going to want to add a couple of things. Um, first thing are going to be a couple of circles, so that's easy enough. This is going to be 8.5. This one's going to be 3.5. All right, and then we're going to want a couple of angles. So we just come here. I want to go straight out and see to there. I want to go do another one. From here, straight out. That's good enough. Um, now we're going to come in here to our Smart Dimension tool. And this tool is super nice. You can just, it's just like an on shape with the dimensions. Come here. We want our angle to be 22.5 degrees. All right, that's nice. Let's make these look a little bit prettier. OK, and then um, we want to just trim it up. So we can go into here to Trim Entities. We want to clean all these up. All these up, all these up, and all these up. Um, the way I did that is so on SolidWorks is a little bit different than on Shape and other things, but it's this idea of power trim. And basically, once I click, anything I cross is going to be deleted. So you can cross, but then you can uncross, something like that. Um, I guess I didn't really understand it fully. Let's try undoing. Try again. If I go here and then, oh, it's the dot. Okay, so if you cross the dot again, it'll like erase your trim, which is cool, I guess. Um, let's just continue. Cool, and we just want the shape in the end. Um, one thing that, oops, uh, go back into sketch, don't edit, end it yet. One thing that I noticed is that it doesn't actually lock it in place. Um, so what you need to do to do that is just go here here and make sure that they are coincident, which means that um, this line, if it continues, is going to pass to the origin. Um, that's all good, and you want to do the same for this one. The origin, coincident. All right, and now it's all uh, black lines. You don't want any blue lines. Um, that's a big, big thing. Um, then we're just going to do a nice pattern around the origin. So, as always, linear pattern. Uh, we want to make it a circular pattern. The Entities are going to be this one right here. Now we're going to want, let's see how many, uh, eight. So it wants eight instances on the origin. Cool. Easy enough. Um, and that's all for now. So let's go ahead and exit the sketch. And we're going to want to go into features and we want to do the extended cut, extruded cut, excuse me. Uh, we're just going to come in here. So the way they do this quickly is go into part four, and then just click on the sketch, and it'll automatically select all eight, which is kind of nice. Uh, we can come in here, and it wants it to be 0.25 inches. Very nice. Cool, cool. All right, so that's that. Um, now we want to do another sketch. This one's going to be on the front again. Um, we could edit this sketch right here, but um, for now, we can just do it like this. Um, so you'll notice one thing I did was I moved after I created the sketch, which 
it makes it a little bit harder to sketch. The way to go back is just to uh, press this button or do Control Shift Z, and I'll go to the previous view, previous view, and now I'm looking straight at it. Um, so the idea that they want us to learn about now is sort of dynamic mirror. Um, I have I I thought the tool was kind of cool, so I put it here. But the way that you can find it is to go up here to this sort of um, uh, search bar up here, or to press W um, and just search for uh, dynamic mirror. And you'll see that it comes up right here. Um, this search bar is super cool. Um, I think by default it's set to help. This is useless, so I just I turn it to commands, and that way every time I press W, it's right there. So dynamic mirror, and then I can drag it and drop it, and then now it's right here. Um, I don't need it there, so I'm just going to sort of delete it. Okay, and there we go. Um, so what I need to do right now is I need to create sort of a construction line. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, the way that you do that is create a line, and you want it to be in construction mode, so for construction. And let's say that, oh, uh, we could do this kind of cool. So we can do a midpoint line for construction. I want it to be the midpoint is in the center. Let's say it's going to go up one. So that's kind of cool. That way it's like more obvious what my mirror line is. All right, and then I want to make it a dynamic mirror. So I can click my line and then click dynamic mirror entities. And what you'll see is that there's, let me zoom in, there's these two uh, horizontal lines on the top and bottom. That means that this element or this entity is a dynamic mirror entity. So with that, we can sort of go ahead and get started. Uh, I want it to be horizontal. Or right in the middle, and I want this to be uh, 0.75. And you'll see right away, boom, it dynamically mirrors the entities across this line, uh, hence the name. Um, and then we can just continue. Uh, I want it to go like, uh, well, I'll go like this. Sure. It wants to be all special. Okay, um, I'm going to delete. You can just select it just like an on shape. Um, we can just go like this. There we go. Um, and then I want these two to be equal. So I can select them both. Control menu, make equal. Uh, and then I just need to dimension one of them. And one of them is going to be between here and here. And it's going to be 0.75. Cool. Okay. And then I want between here and here to be 0.2. I can drag that down a bit. Okay. So now I have 0 0.75, 0 0.2. Uh, oh, these need to be aligned horizontally like that, um, and that should be it. So now I can just uh, exit the sketch. I have my sketch right here, um, and then I can just go into features. Uh, I want to make a cut of, oh, um, actually, to make this easier, we can just do our dynamic trim again. You don't really need to do this, but it's probably... Um, easier if we do. Wait, let's see what I just deleted. Uh, oh, uh, uh, this and this need to be coincident. Cool. That way it's just centered on the origin. Okay, that's fine. Um, we can just do the same thing, extruded cut. I want it to be on this sketch. It goes through all. Very nice. Now I have that little slot so I can pick up my um, hole cover. All right. Last thing, um, I want to make a new sketch on here. I just want to make a uh, circle in the four corners. I want to be here, and I want it to be 0.75 again. Um, uh, the way that you can lock it in place is just by going here, here, uh, and line them vertically. So now it's locked in place. That's super nice. Um, we can just do so it. It says we can do it two ways. We can draw each circle individually, or we can just use the pattern tool. Um, obviously, I'm going to pick uh, the pattern tool because it's like that. And then all I have to do is there, there, and um, all I have to do is there and there and make them horizontal. And that sort of saves me a bit of work. So now they're all locked in place. Nice. And then I just do the cut, extrude the cut again, through all, and bada bing bada boom. There is our cover, our, our cover plate. Um, so that's how I did uh, lab 12. 
Um, again, you know, it's well documented uh, in what the professor gave us, but um, I hope this helped.